Welcome to the Game Dev Shack. Today I want to share a quick tip on how to get the system time, how to save it and how to see how much time has passed between two moments in time. System time means the time that is set on your computer or mobile phone. This can be useful for games that have an offline mechanic, like idle games or breeding games, or simply knowing how much time has passed since the player's last gaming session. My setup is really simple, all I have is three text objects and a background and bonus points for everyone who knows from which artist I stole this famous melted clock, I mean I painted it, it's totally mine. Let's make a new script called Time Manager and open it up. The Time Manager will be responsible for getting the current time, saving it, loading it and getting the difference between the current time and the loaded time. In a way, we will get the current time and for that we need the system namespace because datetime is part of that. To get the time, all we have to do now is make a new datetime and set it to datetime.now. To set our text object to it, let's first make some fields and serialize them so we can assign them in the inspector. And luckily datetime already has a method that can convert it to a string, so we set the text of the text object to that string. Back in the editor, make a new game object, call it time manager, assign the script and then of course assign all the white references. And now when we hit play mode you can see the time now text changes to the current time. For further proof I am recording the taskbar in this video and so you can see the time that is right now on my computer. Now let's do the saving. So make a new method called save time and add the context menu attribute above it so we can easily call the method from the inspector. To save the time we need to convert it to a string which we already did before. So just do that again but this time save it in the player press. I use save as a key and of course the string is the value. When the game starts we check if the player perhaps have the key, that's just to prevent errors if you've never saved the time, like the first time the application runs. If there is a key however, we convert the string back to a date time. We do that by using parse. If for some reason you have a string that might or might not be a converted date time, you can use try parse, which returns a bool if it worked. But in this case I'm pretty damn sure that the string from the player perhaps is a converted daytime, so I just use pass. And then of course set the text object to the daytime. And just to show that it works, we won't use the string from the player perhaps, but convert the daytime back to a string going full circle here. Let's do a quick test in the editor and here I had already saved the time, but let's just do it again. So at 9.49 and 40 seconds the time was saved. If I exit and enter play mode, that is our save time. To get the difference between two daytimes, we can use a really cool thing called time span. So just make a new one and set it to time now minus our save time. The time span looks kinda like this. It saves the days, hours, minutes and so on in a format like this. And with lots of pre-made properties, we can easily get what we are looking for. Since not a lot of time has passed in this example, I'm just going with the total seconds and round it to one decimal place when printing it out as a string. So that's what the capital F1 here is doing. That seems to work quite alright and so there's just one last thing I want to show you and that is a handy way to do this conversion automatically. Hopefully you're using a class that stores all the data you want to save in one place. I recommend that doing for good practice and it makes your life a lot easier. For an in-depth tutorial just see the link in the description. When serializing the class with JSON there is one problem, it messes up the date time and claims that the game was started around the time Jesus was born. To get around that I save the time as a string which can of course easily be serialized by JSON and make a property that automatically converts it. So when another script requests a daytime, it gets the string, converts it and returns that. And when another script wants to record a daytime, it converts it to a string. And the string is then of course saved. Ok this is it, I hope you learned something and in the next video I will show you how to get the time from a server because some players are sneaky little rats that keep messing with the system time 
And if you use it for something like daily achievements, they can get all of them in one day, ruining your plan to have them play your game once a day. And since this is a channel for developers, I will show you how to win this fight. If you have any questions, feedback or requests, please leave a comment and consider subscribing. Thank you and goodbye.